Hello everyone and welcome to WASP 101. I'm Andrea Rossi, the developer of WASP. In this tutorial we are going to be exploring another feature of WASP that hasn't been shown so far and that's the use of multi-channel fields. So what multi-channel fields are are actually not really a separate class of fields but they're just a composition of multiple fields into a single aggregation in order to allow um, different parts to follow different fields and so in this way differentiate your aggregation more. So in this tutorial we're going to explore how we can have an aggregation using two parts and how we can have these two parts follow two completely separate fields in order to create a kind of a transition from an area of an aggregation where there's just one type of part to the opposite side of the aggregation where there's just another part and how we can have a transition with varying amount of one part, one and the other part within the center. Let's get started. If you download the uh, files that you'll find in the link uh, in the description box of this video, you'll find uh, three different files and one of them is a Rhino file that contains two separate parts which are both based on the geometry of a truncated octahedron but which are somehow different in the way uh, that they're built in a sense that one of them is the octahedron itself with some male-female connections on it and another one is a cross-shaped module which is derived from the square faces of the truncated octahedron and so if you then load the grasshopper work file you'll see that these two parts have been loaded as two parts the octahedron being called octa and the cross module being called the cross and you'll already find a set of rules that allow you this to aggregate and the way in which they allow to aggregate is they allow the hexagonal faces of the octahedron to connect to each other to create a packing aggregation and then it allows the square faces of the cross to connect to each other to create a gridded aggregation and then it also allows the square faces of uh, as you can see here the square faces of this octahedron to connect to the square faces of the cross module to to create a transition. So what we want to do with these um, two aggregations is we want to create an aggregation that is going to be filling a volume and what we want to do is we want to have this volume not filled uniformly with a mix of these two parts but we want to have a volume in which we transition from one side where we have just one type of parts to the other side where we have just the other type of part. So from one side it's going to be just octahedrons and from the other side it's going to be just uh, crosses. And then we want to also be able to control what happens in the middle and how the, uh, fee the aggregation transitions from only octahedron to a mix of octahedrons and crosses to only crosses. So to get started the first thing we need to do is we're going to bring in a, we're going to bring in a field aggregation and we're going to set it up. So we're going to go to aggregation, field driven aggregation, bring it in and put it there. And so we're going to start with our parts which have been merged together. And then we're going to set up as always our number of rules which is going to be well, the number of parts which is going to be for a start 250. And our rules which have been merged all together here. We are then going to create a button as well, which we will connect to reset. And now that we have our basic aggregation set up, we are going to go on and start setting up our multi-channel fields. So we're going to move at the bottom here. And so what we're going to do is we're going to create a simple mesh sphere and use that as our volume where we're going to want the aggregation to grow from the center outwards, filling up the sphere. So we're going to create a mesh sphere. And for a mesh sphere, we're going to need an uh, origin point. And so we're going to use a point. Oops. And so we're going to set the X, Y, and Z to the same position, so which is going to be 75. use that as the center of our sphere and then we're going to also use 75 as the radius of our sphere. So this is going to be our base sphere and so similar in a similar way as we have done in the volumetric fields example file that you can go back and look at 
what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a field within the sphere that has the highest values in the center of the sphere and then become uh, lower going outwards so we're gonna start by using a comp using a going to wasp and getting a field points component where we're gonna assign our boundary and we're gonna set a resolution of 10 now that we have our field points we are gonna be uh, calculating the distance of each of the field points from the center of the sphere and we are gonna use that using pull point where we're gonna plug our points and our construct point and this one will return us um, all the distances so once we have the distances what we want to do is we want to remap them and so we know that right now we have very high values when we are far away from the uh, field and very low values when we are very close so we're going to use a bounce component to find the minimum and maximum of this series and then we're going to use a panel to specify that we want to remap them in a new range and this new range is going to be 1 to 0 now that we defined our base uh, field values what we also want to do is we want to use a graph mapper we want to right click on this graph mapper and select a Bezier and you want to transform your Bezier by dragging both handles to the top left and bottom right corners and the reason why we are doing this is that what we want to create is we want to create a very sharp transition from very low values to high values at the ends and we want to have a relatively flat uh, transition space because that's going to be the part in which the two, type, the two types of part will actually start blending uh, together so now that we have these values you should know from the volumetric fields uh, tutorials how to translate this into a field and what this one would do it would just like start from the center and fill up the sphere but that's not what we want so what we want to have is instead of having a single field we want to have two fields and one of them will have will follow these values but also these values will be um, increasing from along the y-axis and then we want to have a second one which will have the values starting at the maximum at the lower point and decreasing as we go backwards to do that uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a deconstruct point component and we're gonna deconstruct all our field points so what we can do is once we deconstructed this we are going to create a um, uh, remap field as well and so we're going to take these values take our min their minimum and maximum using again bounds and then we're going to remap them once in a field that goes from 0 to 1 and that's going to be the one that are going to be increasing so they're going to be 0 here and they're going to be 1 here and then we're going to take this and copy paste it and change the panel and say that this is going to increase from 1 to 0 so in this case we created two sets of values which in one case they're gonna be growing along the y-axis and the other one they're gonna be decreasing now that we have these two sets of values we can use a simple multiplication to combine them with these values and create two separate sets of values that we will use to initialize the two fields so we're gonna use a multiplication component when we're gonna multiply the first value and the second one and then we're going to copy paste this one 
leave it connected to the graph mapper and replace the B input with our element. Now what we can do is we can very quickly create a visualization of this just to understand a little bit what we did. So to do that we are going to create a custom preview which we are going to connect to our points coming from the points of the empty field component. And then I'm going to create a gradient component and I'm going to change its preset to something that has a bit more difference. And we can take a look at what we did. So by default, we would have been using the output of the graph mapper. And what you'll see with this one is that we are going to have some values that have a very low value at the end, at the beginning, then a very large set of values, which are kind of uniform. And then we're going to have very low values at the corners. Now that we multiply this one, you'll see that what we have is we have the same kind of setup, but these values are also very low on the whole uh, side that is close to the zero at the y on the y-axis, and this increase in this direction. And if I'm going to replace the other component, I have the very opposite. So if now we would create two fields, one of them which will follow the octahedron part and one of them which will be followed by the cross part, we expect to have a transition from one side where there's going to be just octahedrons to the other side when there's going to be just crosses. So let's try to build this. So I'm going to get rid of this for now. And so what we're going to be doing next is we're going to go to aggregation and get a field component. And now a field component takes A name and in this case the name is becoming important because that's the name that we're going to be used to reference this field and, a, and tell to a part to follow it. So I'm going to create a panel and I'm going to name the first field plus y. I'm going to then provide the empty field from the field point components and I'm going to then input the output of the first multiplication. I can then create a second field, which in this case I'm going to be naming minus y. As always, no spaces in the names and no funky characters. I'm going to use the same empty field from the field point component, and I'm going to send the values from the second component. Now that I have two fields, I'm going to merge them into one and I'm going to take them and input them in the field component. So now that we've done this what we can do is we can maybe hide the stuff we created here. Now we can maybe yeah we can maybe create a face boundaries component to visualize the wireframe of the mesh. And what we can do is we can go and get uh, get part geometry to see what we created. So what you'll notice is that this doesn't seem to really look like what we wanted to create. And I'm going to try to grow it more. So you'll see that we have, okay, now it's a bit difficult to see. So what we maybe want to do is we want to first go and get a filter parts by name, connect it to the parts out, add an octa, select the first one with a panel, call it octa, then extract the part geometry, and then use a custom preview to visualize it, so that it's going to be a little bit more visible. So and I'm going to use a swatch to color it of some color nice. I'm going to also change the visualization to wireframe so that I'm going to see the, the elements a bit better. And then I'm just going to copy this whole section and change the panel from octa to cross 
to select the cross and then change the color a little bit. So what you see is that what we're creating is not really a transition but more a mixture between these two different type of parts and we also see that it's just growing in the um, in one side of it. Now the reason for that is that we assigned two fields to the field driven aggregation but we haven't specified which part should follow which field. And so what WASP does by default in this case is it's got to ignore the second field and just use the first field for all the parts that are given. So the way to fix this is to go on our parts, which you can find in the left side, and you'll see that since I've been using an advanced part component here, we have a field input. And so in the field input, we can specify the name of the field that each part should follow in order to uh, create the aggregation. So we're going to say that our octa field should follow the plus y field and then I'm going to create a second panel and I'm going to say that my cross part has to follow the minus y field. If now I go and reset, you'll see that I get a very different result which is actually still not what we were looking for. But we see that now we actually have a division in two parts where on one side we have just octahedrons and on one side we have just um, crosses. But you also see that we don't really have a transition. And the reason why we don't really have a transition is that the area that is in the middle, it's the values are almost flat and almost uniform, but there's always going to be a slight difference in a sense that in this side, there's always going to be the values are going to be slightly larger for the octahedron and on this side there's going to be slightly larger and even if this difference is very small the field aggregation components works not probabilistically but uh, in a deterministic and exact way and so it's going to always pick the best solution even though the difference is minimum. So in order to create something that has more of a transition what we need to do is we need to trick the field a little bit and create an area in which we have alternating uh, values in which in certain area in like one point the value for the octahedron is going to be bigger and in another point the value for the cross is going to be bigger. So to do that we can do that by adding a little value to both of them so to both the values for the plus y field and for the minus y field we are going to add a very small random value to each of them in order to uh, drive uh, a differentiation between the two. So I'm gonna go back to my field values and I'm gonna make a bit of space. And so what I'm gonna do is after my multiplication I'm gonna create a random component where I'm gonna specify the random value using a construct domain component and so we know that the values are going to be ranging between 0 and 1 and so I'm going to for example say that I want to have a variation of plus minus, plus minus 0 0.15 so I'm going to create a slider set to 0 0.15 connect it to A and B of the construct domain and then I'm going to right click on A go to expression and set the expression to minus x so in this way I'm going to be creating a domain that is between minus 0.15 and 0.15. I'm going to set that as the domain of my random value. Then for the number of values that I'm going to need, I'm going to, is, I'm going to use a list item. Sorry, a list length. Which I'm going to connect to my multiplication. And then to the number of values. And lastly, I'm going to also create a slider for the seed in order to have different values for the two fields so that they don't add to the same points. So I'm going to set it to a number, could be anything, any integer number. And now that I created this, I'm going to pull this 
slider out because I want to want to keep it the same and I'm gonna copy paste this one lower and I'm gonna then change the seed slider to create a different random I'm gonna then create an addition component and add the values from my multiplication with this little random number and I'm gonna do the same for the second set of values and I'm gonna then replace them as the values in both fields if now we go and we reset our aggregation you see that we are actually creating a transition so we have an area in the middle that becomes a transition between having uh, just crosses and having just octahedrons and we can control the size and the range of that area exactly by changing how much randomness we add to the base values so if I will add more randomness now and I'm gonna go and reset again you'll see that the transition area in which these two parts mix become much larger while instead if I go and reduce it to let's say the transition area will become much much smaller and the transition between the two will be much sharper and much closer to what we had when we didn't add the randomness now this is let's say the plugin free version to do that uh, a quicker and easier way to do this avoiding to add all these components would be to use a component that comes with the Teropter plugin which is called randomize which will fundamentally do automatically what we did with this set of components I'm gonna bring it up, back up and then reset again and here we go I could just add a bit more parts and see that we actually created this structure so I could just change the view a little bit to kind of visualize it and so you see how Fundamentally, using multi-channel fields uh, enables you to have much more control on your aggregation and also create uh, aggregated structures where different parts follow different kind of drivers that could be geometry, could be different kind of uh, structural uh, information or environmental data. And so uh, multi-channel fields are really one of the very powerful tools that will allow you to create much more differentiation and gain a much higher level of control on your aggregation. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and uh, you have learned something new about how to work with WASP and I hope you'll be uh, following this series. There's gonna be some more tutorials coming. I'm gonna try again to is one tutorial every uh, Wednesday now hopefully and so if you enjoyed the tutorial and want to be keep informed make sure to subscribe to the video and also to activate the notifications so that you will be notified at every new uh, video coming also stay tuned because pretty soon I'm gonna be releasing a final stable version of the newest uh, wasp so there's gonna be finally a stable release on food for rhino there's still Two, three thing, two or three things that I'm going to be adding and you might have seen on uh, Instagram but for now, for today, that's it hope you enjoyed it and see you in the next tutorial